Hey guys, welcome to another episode of On Social. I'm your host, Stephen Haywood, and this is a show where we talk about everything that has to do with social media, marketing, live video, in social media. So um, I'm happy you guys came out here. It's great to see everybody. Now, last week I had some comments of people saying that the audio was too low. So I fixed that. So hopefully we should have um, a little bit better volume for you guys here. It wasn't bad, but um, it was it was kind of a little on the low side. So I understand. I appreciate the feedback. You guys have been awesome. So um, what I want to do right now is I want to introduce a guy who I've known for a, a, a few years. This guy has a huge resume. This guy worked at ESPN for over 25 years. He handled a lot of the backroom stuff, and he was a manager. I'll let him kind of explain that. He also has his own successful social media marketing and uh, video and audio podcasting business. Uh, it's it's a pleasure to introduce my friend, Mr. Marty McPadden from Podjam.tv. Welcome. Hello. How are you? Uh, it's great to have you here, man. I know we kind of went through a little bit of uh, <laughs> a little pre-show jitters there, if you will, uh, trying to get some things ironed out. But yeah, we, we, we made it. Everything was good. Everything was good. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's funny. It, 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 we have some notes for today, but I have a whole other story about why my, my normally my shot would not look like this because I'm on my backup system. And that's a whole other story. And, and that can be part of the discussion today, I guess, you know, the importance of backup systems. At least well, I mean, this is something this is something that we have done many, many times in many, many years where we've we've kind of, you know, talked to the audience. And one of the things that we get to do on the show, which is which is really, really cool is we get to talk to people about understanding video and social media. Um, as, as I alluded to earlier, we're on Facebook, we're on YouTube, we're on Vic Gravity, we're on Roku. Now, with Roku, if you guys are interested, my personal brand, TTV Network, if you search that app out, you can download it and watch this show live. I'm using that to help promote the Telestream show. Eventually, I'm hoping, we, Marty, we get a, a Telestream app and and people can enjoy it that way. But if you go to any of the Tech Buzz channels, you can watch it live. But you can also watch it, and I encourage you to watch it on the Wirecast Telestream Wirecast Facebook page, or the LinkedIn page, the Telestream LinkedIn page, or the Telestream Tube. It's Telestream Tube YouTube channel. So make sure you guys do that. So Marty, why don't you tell everybody a little bit about yourself? Um, I kind of alluded to a little bit of uh, uh, things here in the beginning, just for people that don't know, and 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 we'll kind of get into why I thought you were you know, kind of the perfect co-host for this with with your current job. Yes, as Stephen mentioned, uh, I am an alumnus of uh, ESPN. I, I spent twenty, almost twenty years of my career there. Uh, when I left in just about five years ago, this very month, uh, I was manager. I was one of the managers in content edit and our job was to watch over the editors and primarily during prime time. So if you watch sports center or the studio shows, we would um, monitor and supervise the editors creating the clips and the highlights for that show. So I had a lot of experience there working in control rooms. So I started my career as an associate director. I'd worked live events. Uh, so I have a lot of experience on the network side of things and, and during, as co-host of the show, I'll, I'll certainly bring in some of that experience and share it with Steven and, and you guys, but that's kind of my, my background. And then currently, since I've left ESPN, I'm in my own business. And Steven mentioned, I do some social media marketing. I do a lot of production work along with that social media marketing po podcast, production and editing, video production and editing, live video shows and editing. Um, so a little of everything there. We also do some live events on the road and, and maybe you might during the course of the show, you might see me from the road <laughs> coming in from various locations right now. I'm, I'm on hiatus, but there may be later in the summer where we tend to go out for weeks at a time and doing these live events, but we'll get into that and probably could be some good subjects for some shows. So that's kind of a little bit of, of my background what I bring to it. And I've known Steven for a while now and, uh, always looked up to him. You know, Steven has a great history himself. And I just appreciate him bringing me on. And hopefully between the two of us and, you know, with the Telestream audience, we can help you guys uh, get a little more social with your video. So looking yeah. forward to this, Stephen. Yeah, I mean, this is something that I think a lot of people, I alluded to in the last episode of how people 
really want to engage their audience. And there's a lot of things, Marty, I think you and I can both hit on as things of what not to do with live video on social. Um, there's so many times that I know you and me have gone on, we've watched different shows, and we've seen people, you know, do the, um, the cell phone, right? The cell phone shot, and they're kind of being live and wonky and making people dizzy, for lack of better um, discussion. But uh, some of the other things that we've seen, right, is is people going live from their bedroom, from their messy bed. Um, mm -hmm. What's as you going in the in the path that you're going? What's the biggest turnoff for you when you when you talk with clients? And and their big issue is like they want to go live and you're saying this is what you should not do. What's one of your biggest what you say pet peeves when it comes to that? I I think it's not paying attention to the entire presentation, right? And I'll I'll, use, I'll give you an example. In my job at ESPN, I was a manager, so I was involved in in the hiring process, and so that meant uh, interviewing candidates for jobs. So I'm sure everyone out there has gone out on a job interview from time to time. And one of the things you do is you want to present a good image. Now, it's not a question of being inauthentic or being fake. It's just you want to put your best foot forward. So then, you know, people size you up and, and whether you like it or not, they're making that first impression judgment and whether they should listen to you and whatever you say. So if it's an interview, whether they should continue to listen to you and take you seriously. If it's a video show, whether to take your content seriously or what to give you your chance. And I, you know, Stephen mentioned, you know, kind of people kind of being casual and, and maybe, you know, having stuff in the background. Now I'll give you an example. My setup right here, I was kind of, uh, uh, I had a different setup. I normally run a nice camera. And all I was having trouble with that. I always have a backup. And right now I'm just using my webcam on my computer, which not, is not the way I would normally do this, but five minutes to air, we have no little choice, and at least I have my audio good and all that stuff. But we'll troubleshoot just the, this week. I mean, it happens. Exactly. But it's the way you present yourself, right? So hopefully you're not getting a bad impression on me because of my angle. Normally this is not my camera angle. But the importance is if people are just coming across your, your stuff for the first time and they're sizing you up, it's like you want to have that whole presentation down. So I call it like the three Ps, production, presentation, and well, not three, production, presentation, and content. Before they can get to the content, production presentation is important. Not a question that you have to spend a lot of money, and I think we'll get into that a little bit, Stephen. But mm -hmm. but it's a matter of just putting your best foot forward. You know, um, you know, having a nice clear image, as clear audio as possible. Again, not spending a lot of money, uh, but you got to remember all that. And it's and and again, preparation's the key. <laughs> you know, you just can't expect everything to work. You know, and I had some issues now where I had to go to my backup here, mm -hmm. but um, but at least I had that available to me. You know, and um, and especially with this show being right at two o'clock, you have to go on. Uh, but I think that's the biggest thing, Stephen, is 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 presenting that, that, that you know, a good presentation so that people actually listen to you. I, I think, too, when you're when you're working with companies and businesses, you know, we're both here. We're both in nice polo shirts. You know, we're we're presenting ourselves. Well, we're not waking up with bed head and coming on here and or, or, or you know, wearing, you know, clothes that you'd mow the grass and I think a lot of people don't realize the 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 uh the amount that you have to look the part not just you know not just uh have a good camera and a good microphone if you can't present yourself well I think it's a turnoff for people especially if you're going to do this for business if you're going to if you're going to have yourself be um uh, like you're doing pr producing for people you have to be able to give people the tips in order to have to make them the best possible presentation they can have, right? Exactly. Um, and that's probably, as far as when I'm working with clients, that's probably one of my bigger challenges, especially people that are new to it. They're, ch chances are they're very focused on their content. Normally, when I'm working with that, you know, they're, they're pretty laser locked on that. But they get intimidated with all the production and presentation. And even this, where mm -hmm. my camera angle is not where I normally would have it. You know, I would, this is a good tip here, where a lot of people have the, I'm, I'm using my laptop um, webcam, and the angle is not bad, but it's not the best. I would raise this camera up a little bit, probably put some books under my lap. If I'm using my laptop, put some books under the laptop, raise the camera up to eye level so that you're looking straight into the camera. Right now, I'm kind of looking down, and so I'm kind of demonstrating that what not to do 
Stevens, on the other hand, his shot is what to do. So, you know, this kind of like this, this, this issue I had with my camera kind of worked out so I can kind of live demonstrate. This is not the ideal thing. Although, at least I have some lighting. But you can make it look good. Mic. Yeah. Right, right. You know, <laughs> I, I make sure I, you know, I, I dress up. I look, look. But my back, when he puts it on the main shot, my background's not good. I, my, my plain background is just a, you know, just a beige curtain. But my angle is not great. So you're seeing part of the wall. You're seeing the ceiling. Not ideal. You know, and part of the, the, the deal with especially live video and you're kind of looking at what's in that square. And it's almost like being in a TV studio where all that matters is what's in that square and kind of that you're, you're basically putting this illusion out sort of like you're presenting this. And it doesn't it, it could be a mess back here. It could be like a, you know, a, a fourth false front or whatever on sets or whatever. Just a matter of how it looks. Mm -hmm. and what you're presenting and and it's like it's like you're creating this this whole I, I, I a facade it it's is. basically a facade yeah right? exactly yeah. exactly yeah. you know so so switching gears here a little bit i think that one of the other key elements we we touched a little bit on it last week was the importance of interaction and one of the things that we're doing right now is we're streaming to multiple destinations and each one of them has their own chat room okay one of the biggest, um, in my uh, opinions, one of the hardest things to do, especially like I'm producing it, I'm hosting it, we're, we're, we're co-hosting it here. Um, one of the biggest things is to keep up with the chat room. Now, I noticed with LinkedIn Live, which is everybody wants to get on, it's the golden child right now, right? Um, it's a great platform. You know, we've gotten a lot of great uh, viewers over there. But one of the things that I'd like to say to the folks watching, you have to refresh the page, unfortunately, to see the chat move. Um, I've had to do it quite a few times here while we're doing this. Now, on YouTube, we're able to look at the chat room and, you know, see people that are commenting and they're happy to see us back and being the duo again. Um, I think it's one of those things where, you know, we want to stay in it. We want to stay um, interactive with the chat room. But some of these companies got to make it a little easier for us on YouTube and that uh, some way to combine the chat room. Uh, because when, you, when you're streaming to 10 different destinations, it's it's kind of next to impossible to kind of keep up with everything, right? Yeah, I, I I can't overemphasize enough what you're saying about the interaction. I mean, if you're going to go live, that is key, and that's really what social video is all about, as opposed to mass media in the old days where you would broadcast out and you wouldn't have the interaction. Um, it's very, very key. Now, you mentioned about going to multiple destinations, which has a lot of advantages. But one of the disadvantages is trying to keep up with the different chats. When people are watching you, it's funny because, they, you know, and they should. They care about, you know, having that connection with the host. And they might be watching on a, on a platform that you may be difficult to monitor the chat. So I think that's going to be a challenge as far as the live video industry is, is how do you combine all these chats? I know there are some companies that are working on that, you know, especially with the with the – uh, people that redistribute, you know, the services that redistribute the, you know, signal, mm -hmm. um, the restreaming uh, services uh, are working on that as well. But that's a challenge, you know, and, you know, it, and what you do, Steve, and obviously you're self-producing, which is which is extremely difficult. Uh, that's another tip is, you know, if you can work with a, a team or work with a couple other people, maybe one person can watch the chat for you and you can set up uh, a system where they can get shuttle you questions. Um, and it can be done remotely, mm -hmm. uh, but it's but what you're doing there is probably is very advanced, you know. And I think that's something we need to point out is especially if you're just starting out, don't expect to have it look how you are doing it, where you have your workflow rock solid, you've done it right. over a period of years, and you're making it look easy. And that's kind of the red flag is when it when someone makes it look easy, it probably isn't. <laughs> so and, and I would state too to everybody out there, when you're getting started doing this on social media, pick a platform where you have the biggest engaged audience and stick with that platform to get going. I think that's where you're gonna have your most success because when you start getting into multi platform and like Marty said, you don't have a team to work with you to engage in conversation. Um, you know, there's there, there's so many things that can go wrong. I know there's different platforms out there that do involve, they, they've integrated the chat rooms, but they're wonky. Uh, for lack of better terms, they're wonky. They don't always work correctly. Sometimes it misses things. So hopefully one day these, these, these tools will become available to everybody. But in the meantime, now, Marty, you touched on something a little earlier. You touched about professionalism. We talked about being professional 
Um, but but I think when people hear the word professional, they get scared, especially when they're you know they're they're going in social media maybe on a shoestring budget, and they get worried because they hear professionalism and automatically that indicates big dollars. And I think we both have enough experience to say that you don't have to have high dollar to look professional. I mean, you're coming in here with a built-in camera right now. Um, you do have a higher end microphone, but you mm -hmm. made your, your backdrop look really good to where it's, it doesn't matter. It's a curtain, but it doesn't look like, you know, you're sitting in your bedroom. <laughs> Dude, I'm going to raise this up. I'm going to kind of demo of what it should look like. So if I just raise this up a little bit here, you can already tell that it's probably I'm looking more directly into the camera. So normally if I was to use this as my normal setup, I would probably bring it up to about here and put maybe some books under it. And if you just have a laptop with a little webcam like I, I'm using here, that's that's plenty to get started. You know, the other thing, Stephen, is if you're just getting started and you don't have all the fancy equipment yet, that's actually not a bad thing because at least you can get used to workflow. And also, you know, in the beginning, nobody's going to be watching. You're building an audience, from, especially if you're building it from scratch. So that's the time to kind of make your mistakes, learn. Uh, and if you do make a mistake or if you do, if it doesn't look exactly how you may want it to look, you know, down the road, it doesn't really matter because you have, you don't have a lot of people watching and you can grow, you can grow gradually, you know. Um, the other thing, as you mentioned, I have a pretty fancy, you know, both of us are using the Hilo PR40. You don't need a, a fancy mic like this to get started. A USB plug-in mic. Um, we recommend the eight, you know, a uh, dynamic mic, uh, mm -hmm. and we can get maybe we can get into that another we'll get show. Get into that in another show, but yeah, yeah we but a, just a plug-in mic doesn't is not very expensive. The camera on your laptop is fine. Just raise up your laptop, just have a couple of lights, you know, or even a brightly lit room, and you're good to go. Just have a, maybe a curtain in the back, and you're good to go. At least that that'll get you started. You know, and then you go from there. You know, we can get into that as we get as we get into more shows. But again, you know, don't look at what Steven's doing or what I'm doing as out of the gate. You have to do that. No, I mean, just have a like me. I'm just using my webcam, and it's not the greatest webcam at all. It's only 720p. Um, it's not as crystal clear as what Steven's using. But again, I I dress up. I make sure I look all right. I make sure I'm in a well-lit room. Decent microphone. Doesn't have to be this expensive. Have good content, and you're off and running. I think that's something else to stress, too, you know, when you're, when you're doing this. Um, we want this show to be as professional as possible. We want to give you guys the best experience that we possibly can. And I know a lot of you users in here, you're talking about Wirecast. Yes, Wirecast is one of the elements that we use here in the show, and it's fantastic. So if you have not, um, again, I, I, I'm not using this to, to, to sell the product, but if you're new to, new to Telestream and you didn't know that we have um, this product, you definitely want to go check it out. Wirecast um, over on the Telestream website, telestream.net. Um, we also have a hardware configuration, which is the Wirecast gear. We have different versions of the software to get you going um, with, with uh, Wirecast 1 all the way up to Wirecast Studio and Pro. So there's something there for your needs without having to relearn uh, your workflow. So I want to kind of put that out there. If you're liking what you're seeing here and you're like, hey, I'd like to do a show like that on social media, go check it out. There's a free download. Um, I know my, Marty and I, we both use it. We've used it for years. Mm -hmm. um, it's, a, it's a great product. So I know a lot of the guys in there. So there's a lot of cool tips and, and tricks that you can use. Now, Marty, I kind of want to shift gears here before we have to wrap up the show. And one of the things is we, we talked about that you do a lot of social media and video production work for clients. Um, I don't know if people are aware, but you actually did back for um, Pandora. You did the John Legend uh, show where he had come to New York. They, they wanted uh, somebody to come in. I recommended you. You went in. You produced it. You kind of were like the overseer. I was kind of on speed dial, kind of helping you out if you needed it. But you were great. We, but we were able to get that going. John Legend was thrilled. The whole, the whole, uh, the crew was thrilled. You were thrilled. I mean, it was it was good. Um, why don't you talk a little bit about it for for a few minutes? What are companies looking for when it comes to these videos? I mean, when you look at something and a, and a company says to you, "Hey, I want to look the best that I can," or or how do I get started with this? What what is your what is your um, message to them? Uh especially a business, uh, you know, hire a professional, <laughs> work with them. I mean, you're going to get a much better product. Uh, some of the things I do, like with the John Legend 
show that was part of a larger production. So they were taping a, a special, a TV special uh, around his latest album. And what we did as a pro- as kind of a promotion was Pandora um, live streamed the first two songs of, of the session that he did. About an, it was about an hour concert. It was invite only. Uh, and he, we live streamed the first two songs. And so we kind of piggybacked on the main um, production crew. So they, they we had access to one of their cameras, the overall shot. And then we had a couple of our own cameras. And so my job there was, and we were running Wirecast. And so I worked with the crew at um, Pandora. And I was the TD or technical director. And we had a, a director and a sound guy just for our setup. And so it was a very much a team approach. And that's another thing. I mean, you know, Stephen, you're doing your show alone. Normally, these sh- any kind of production is a team sport, basically. And everyone kind of does one job. So my job was called tech, was technical director. I made the actual switches based on the direction of the director over my shoulder. And so, yeah, we set up our shots and we, and it was, and Wirecast was great for that because we ran it off a of Mac. I remember we ran it off a of Mac Pro mm-hmm. uh, and it was just perfect. And, you know, you were mentioning Wirecast and then the, and the offerings there. Like that, the Wirecast one is a great way to get started. But what the one thing I like about Wirecast and what worked great that night is really the simplicity of the interface, and it's just a really easy um, live stream package to get started with. If you have no experience in television, it's a great way to get started. It's very very straightforward. You can bring sources in, and it worked great for us because it was something we just needed something fairly straightforward just to stream to, to Facebook and it has that built in streaming. So that's, again, it's very, very easy and you, and the co-brand it. So we stream to um, the Pandora page in, in association, in association with John legend. Uh, and it was great. I mean, uh, but I would say, you know, hire a professional if you're a business, you don't know what you're doing. It's well worth the money. You're, you're going to spin your wheels. It's, it's like, it's like you can change your own oil or change your own brakes on your car, but it's probably going to take you all day and you're probably going to mess it up. <laughs> so well, if well, you're a business, you know. You... It's like what we always say, right? Um, you know, you, you say hire a professional, but, you know, all this stuff that you're seeing right now is being done. Preparation, 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 right? So you yeah. always, what's the 90-10 rule that you always say, right? Yes, and that and that's something that uh, to a lot of people they don't realize that, but it's really it's ninety ten rule. Ninety percent of the work is done, uh, and you really only see ten percent. So this part we're doing now is really the ten percent. The ninety percent is all the pre work, and all right. the work that you do, pre- you know, preparing up to the showtime. You know, so and and people yeah, and I think it. that's the biggest surprise for clients is they don't realize how much work that goes into it. But once they get on board with that, it's a much better production. You know, I've I've podcast clients that are you know that do believe in that and their shows end up being really really good we work with a team and uh and that's really the key to it and then once they climb on board with that they realize oh yeah this stuff that there is a lot of work and i think people don't realize they only see all well, if they're not seeing it they don't see the necessity of it but it is quite necessary or else you're not going to be able to go right. on and, and have a good show right right so right now, guys, um, I know we're on episode two. When we get to episode six or seven, what we're going to do is we're going to have this podcast that you'll be able to get it on iTunes and Google Play and anywhere else you know podcasts are. So I'd encourage you guys to to stay tuned to that. Also, go over and like the Telstream Facebook page if you have not done that already. Go like it. There's also a Wirecast users group. I'd encourage you to go over there and join that group. Um, I'm one of the administrators there. I'll, I'll let you guys in. And the reason I'm asking you to do this is we want suggestions for the show. We want you We want you to engage with us. We want audience participation. What are some of the things that you struggle with with live video and social media? What are some of the things that maybe we can help you with um, on this show? I mean, that's, that's one of the things. You know, Marty said, you know, hire a professional. But if you're one of those people that want to actually learn and you – it's okay to – to crawl before you start to run. And I understand yes. this day and age, you know, you got to get up and going. But if you want to get to that point, feel free. Put down in that group. Go over and Wirecast users. If you look it up on Facebook, go in there. We'll get you in there. And what we're going to do is we're going to start, you know, facilitating comments, questions, and adding it to the show. Who knows? This show may become an hour long. But for right now, um, it's going to be a half an hour. We're going to keep it quick, smooth, and, you know, so just remember, do that. Go follow us, like the uh, LinkedIn page. Let's build that audience. And uh, 
We really appreciate it. Marty, thank you so much for taking the time today to come on and join us. <laughs> Get your blood pressure. Yeah, hopefully my camera, I'll have a, a better presentation next week. I'll figure this out. But yeah, I got a. Uh... I got stung uh, this week. Well, so. wait, you're doing productions for other people, so it's it's to be expected. Yes. So um, <laughs> if you guys want to know more about Marty, you can check him out at podjam.tv. And, uh, you know, he's pretty much all over the web. Marty McFadden, just look him up. And, guys, I really appreciate it. I want to thank everybody for tuning in today. It's uh, it's, it's always a great time to come out here and, and, and reach out to you, you guys in the community. And remember to keep focused, stay vigilant, and, and you know, make good productions and just remember you can be creative. So we'll see you next week. Same time, same channel.